One of our standard reference electrodes is the saturated calomel electrode. Now, calomel is a historic term uh, referring to H2Cl2, which is going to be a solid. So what I'd like you to do, take a look at this line notation, pause the video and try to sketch what you think the cell might look like. Okay, so let's go through the process here. So, platinum, wire, then we're going to have some liquid mercury, then we're going to have the calomel powder in that, or at least in contact with that, but it still has to be exposed to whatever is going to carry me along the salt bridge, right? So let's just go ahead and imagine that it's going to be a little crust of Hg2Cl2 solid right there at the surface. Now we might say, yeah, realistically that's probably not going to happen. But remember, we don't actually have to have our states of matter totally separated from each other. And you can picture a really dense liquid like mercury with crystals of this Hg2Cl2. We could probably just mix that up really well and make it into a fine paste. We're still going to have the separate states of matter. There's still going to be that dense liquid around the little grains of the solid. And so we could probably just actually get rid of all of this and just make it into a really fine paste where we specify that it's got the Hg liquid and then our Hg2Cl2. Now let's take a look at what it would really look like. You can see we did a pretty good job of guesstimating what that would look like, depending on if we're looking at this sketch or if we're looking at a more almost photographic diagram of what a saturated calomel electrode looks like. So let's go through this diagram and then we'll compare that to the almost photo. So you see here we have our wire lead of platinum wire. We have a layer of mercury liquid right there making our electrical contact with the paste underneath. And in here we're going to have some, high, uh, some mercury still making the connection throughout. And then our Hg2Cl2, our calomel. Now we said saturated calomel electrode. The reason is that we're going to saturate it with KCl because that gets us to a more stable voltage instead of having E0 of 2 point, uh, sorry, 0.268 positive. Once we saturate it, we no longer have to care about adjusting for our actual equilibrium conditions. Remember, this is just a table value the E plus or minus that we care about is going to be dependent on conditions. These conditions won't change over the course of our experiment, and so we can be confident that this voltage will be very stable throughout our experiment. Okay, so that would be our potential for the saturated calomel electrode, and it's saturated because we have KCl there, and we're also keeping a saturated solution of KCl down here. Now we still need to have our contact through everything else, and we have to get to our salt bridge. So this would be kind of like the liquid around that sitting in the beaker. We're going to have our saturated KCl solution. We're going to keep all this crud where we want it to be. You know, we want this powder and goop to stay where we have it intended. So we'll have this steel wool, I'm sorry, glass wool. Then we'll have an opening over here on the side so that we can have the electrical contact and change, exchange of ions if we need it. But we don't have to worry about it dribbling out. Any tiny bit of liquid that seeps through is just going to pull at the very bottom of the tube. So we have our saturated KCl, we have our solid KCl keeping it saturated, and of course there's going to be some porousness, just like a bed of sand, and it'll still allow the fluid to flow through our, our porous plug, which is a salt bridge. Now we come back over here, remember we usually want to have some sort of a sleeve so we can close the hole when we're not doing our experiment, but we always open the hole during the experiment. Here what they've done is what I just kind of proposed when we were doing our sketch. They've taken the mercury liquid, notice it's zero charge, so that's our liquid, and our paste of our calomel, made a nice little goop and just coated it right onto the platinum wire. But they've surrounded it with the saturated KCl solution, and what they're going to do is have an asbestos fiber plug here at the end. Remember, we said that it has to be porous. We often don't specify what the material is, but asbestos is what's commonly used uh, in order to make these experimental probes. Now, the saturated calomel electrode it has some danger to it because we're working with mercury compounds and a lot of people don't want to use mercury compounds and maintain them in their labs. And so you'll see that silver silver chloride is the one that's more commonly used in research labs. 
But for people who do a lot of electrochemistry and care about getting very fine measurements, it turns out that the saturated Kalamo electrode has very few of the very practical issues that come with some other electrodes. And so when you set up your saturated Kalamo electrode, your SCE, the values you find are almost always going to be dead on with the other values you find in the literature, both because your setup and their setup were in good condition and give you the same results. So there is a little bit of a dichotomy there. Some people will prefer the silver silver chloride because, well, it's safer. Other people will prefer the saturated Kalamo electrode for its almost bulletproof behavior when it comes to how good of a value it gives you in your measurements.